Okay, uh, first of all, I have to say you that uh, uh, the deadline for the third deliverable is uh, reaching, so don't forget that uh, the 20th of May you have to submit uh, your work for the third deliver deliverable, and then that uh, on uh, 25 of May you have to present your project as you can find on the website, so don't forget it, okay? Okay. Then, uh, during the last sec, the last lesson, during the last sec, lesson, okay, uh, we developed a real simple calculator in Android, if you remember. Uh, even though I didn't and to do it. So here is the complete version of the calculator and uh, looking at the implementation you can find four different uh, uh, functions, methods that implements the four different operations that we wanted to do to perform in our calculator. Uh, okay. I will not uh, go in details because uh, it is uh, really easy. I only copied and pasted the, the code from the first uh, method and the other ones. You can find uh, the only difference that you can find is here in, um, in this function that is the division one in which uh, uh, I check for the second number. If it is zero, I print on the screen of the user a message uh, telling him that uh, it is not possible to divide by zero, okay? Uh, I promised you to show, to show you how to run your application on your smartphone. So, uh, now I will show you how to activate the developer tools in your smartphone, then the debug, and then how to run the application on your smartphone. So, first of all, uh, Using Team Read, Team Viewer, I will show you uh, the screen of my smartphone. Hoping it, it works. Okay. Okay. As you can see, this is my smartphone. Okay. If you go in the settings, so I press on the uh, button that is in the top. Settings. Uh, then, if I go down, I will find. Oh, excuse me, I did. I forgot to change the language. So English. Okay. Okay. So if you go in the settings, in the at the end of this menu, you find about that reports some information about the Android system. Then, uh, if you go in software information, you will find some other information. If you click seven times on build number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Now, I am a developer, so if I come back to the uh, previous menu, I will find the developer options, okay? If I go in this menu, Okay, they are not activated, so I have to activate them. And then the system asks me something. Okay, and then I have to activate US de debugging. Okay, it uh, advised me about uh, warnings and so on, so okay. And now I can use my smartphone uh, to test my application. So now I will connect the smartphone with USB. Okay. Uh, USB. Okay. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. As you can see, there is uh, the notification that says me that uh, I can use it as a USB debugging uh, device. Okay, now I come back in uh, Android Studio, then if I press run, the run button, it should show me 
the list of devices with my smartphone that it is not in the list as usual. Uh, okay. Here is the smartphone. Now it uh, asked me if I want to use my smartphone with, uh, uh, with an Android Studio. So I have to accept this, uh, this wearing. Okay. And now Android Studio, Studio should, okay, should show my device. So now I can select this device as uh, the device that I want to use to test my application and click OK. Now Android Studio should compile. Okay. And at the end, okay, wait. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at this, the, the end of the, of the screen, in the bottom part of the screen, uh, what Android Studio is doing. It, it is now installing APK on my smartphone. Okay, as you can see, this is my smartphone and this is the app we developed. So, in this way, we can test the application on our our own bus, uh, smartphone system. So, uh, okay, now I will close Team Viewer because otherwise the computer will crash and I will disconnect my smartphone. Okay. In any case, I will continue to use the emulated smartphone for the test of the next part, uh, the next uh, application. Uh, okay, now. Um, during the last uh, uh, the last lesson, I arrived at um, the services. Okay, so so we uh, we saw how to implement a really simple application. So we saw all the components, essential components of an application. And, uh, and now I will show just the last uh, few um, information that you need to uh, implement what you need. Okay, uh, so the first component that uh, I have not yet uh, covered during the last lesson is the service. So. Uh, let's look at the, the list of components. Okay, uh, as I told you, the main components of an application are activities, services, content providers, and broadcasts. Uh, I've already explained what are activities, and now uh, I'm speaking about services. I'm going to speak about services. Okay, uh, what is a service? A service is the component that we should use to run something in the background. So for example, if we want to connect to a server to take some information, we should use a service because otherwise if we implement it in the main activity, uh, the application will stop waiting for the information received from the server and then continue the execution. So we cannot do this operation in the main activity and so we can use the services. Uh, okay. This is the life cycle of a service. As you can see, there are two different uh, um, uh, life cycles, let's say. The first one, uh, the, the differences are in the command that uh, started. The first one is uh, on start command and the other one is on bind. The difference is that we use on start command inside uh, our application to begin the work, that the work that we want to perform instead on bind uh, is used when uh, another thread, for example, from another application is used to uh, execute the, our, our service. Okay, then uh, the other component uh, is content, content provider. It manages shared information. So for example, if we, are, uh, we want to share information with other applications, we, sh we can use the content provider to provide this information to the other application. So, I don't know, uh, 
Uh, I'm uh, Google Fit, so my application is Google Fit. Google Fit shares some information with other uh, applications from other companies, from, from other developers. How, this, how Google Fit can share this information using content provider. Okay. Then, broadcasts uh, is the way that Android used to uh, connect okay, application. Okay, as, as you can see in the slide, uh, they are mainly broadcast messages that, uh, for example, an application sends to everyone to communicate something. Uh, I'm thinking of an example. Uh, let's say that uh, you are looking for the devices that are uh, that have uh, the product uh, turned on. Okay. Uh, you um, you find the three devices and you want to inform all the other applications that you do it. In this way, you can uh, use lower battery, for example, because you discover the devices and then you communicate to everyone that you uh, what you find. Okay. Uh, the broadcast receivers don't display user interface, so they are in the background as a services. So, another important stuff is the app life cycle. Why it is important? Because, as I told you, uh, a Linux process is created for an application when uh, uh, the code is executed, but, and it should remain in the stack of uh, running uh, applications until you uh, end it. But if the uh, device don't, uh, doesn't have enough memory, for example, or enough resources, it can kill your application. So there are different kind of uh, uh, status of your process in which your application should be. So the foreground is the one uh, when that is uh, um, that represents the, the application that is run in the foreground, so the, the one that you can see. Then there is the visible, that is uh, uh, the one that um, is not um, the main, let's say, the user is not interacting with it. Okay? And then there are service, background, and empty, uh, okay, as you can see in the documentation. Uh, finally, the other important stuff is uh, the intents. What are intents? Uh, they are messaging objects to request an action from other app components. So, for example, they are used for three main activities. The first one is to start an activity, the second one to start a service, and the third one to deliver a broadcast. So, you use intents to do this kind of uh, operations. Okay, uh, now I will use the main time to develop another application, as I told you, more complete than the one that we developed during the last uh, laboratory. So, what I will develop? I, uh, as, as, uh, as you know, we developed the to-do list application during the, all the course. Uh, and during the last laboratory, we developed a, a server with a client side that communicates with it to manage the to-do list. Okay. Now, I will create a client side, a client application to communicate with the server that we developed during the, the seven laboratory uh, to manage the list. So here you can see the main views that we will develop during the, the lesson. And uh, so uh, the first one shows you the, the list of to-do of tasks that you should do uh, and provide you a button to insert a new task and so on. The other views uh, you can see what they should do. Okay, so I will close PowerPoint and I will pass to Android Studio. Okay, uh, the first thing, the first thing to do is. Uh, to download, if you want uh, um, to do the same thing that I'm doing, you can. You have to first of all download the 
solution of the last laboratory, so laboratory number seven, uh, because we will use the server that implemented it in it. So uh, I've already done it, and uh, I will not show you the application in WebStorm, otherwise the computer will crash, but I'm running the, the server um, simply in the command line. So I will write uh, Python task server. Okay, to run the application and to demonstrate to you that it works, I will open Chrome, copy address. Okay, and okay, this is our. Uh, application that communicates with our server. Okay, you, re you remember it? Perfect. So, now, let's start a new uh, application in Android Studio. Okay, let me close Chrome again because of memory. So, file, new, new project. The name of the project can be to-do list. Location could be desktop. Okay, so we don't see the buttons. Okay, I have to trust. And let's do it. Press OK. Okay, uh, and this way, uh, here I have to select the, the platform for which I'm developing the application as usual. I will leave the one that is already selected, then I select an empty activity, and then I will call the main activity main activity. Okay. Now Android Studio should configure everything it needs. Okay, just for memory, let me close the oops, the old calculator. Okay. Now I will try to plug again the microphone, just, uh, I hope. Okay. Can you hear me? Not so much. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so, we, now we have the, uh, the, the application that, uh, as usual, show user the message hello world. Okay. But we want to substitute it with uh, uh, and the list of our uh, um, uh, the list of our uh, tasks. Thank you very much. Today, okay. So let's go in in the the sign view. Oh, okay. So I will delete hello world. And then I will insert what I wanted to insert. So the list view. As I told you in the last uh, lesson, there are a lot of different uh, um, layouts. So I will select the relative layout as uh, I did in the, in the, last, in the last lesson. Uh, layouts, relative layout. Okay, and I will insert a list view inside this layout. List view. Okay. Okay. Uh, now I want to insert uh, this uh, the, the, the list of tasks inside this list. How we can do it? First of all, let's. Uh, I will uh, develop this uh, this part uh, in two different parts. The first one I will uh, take the information from a JSON file. And then the second one will download this, this information from the server. So first of all, let's create the uh, JSON file that will contain this information. I will create it in the REST folder. 
uh, if you look at the documentation, the best uh, place to, uh, to take it is the raw folder. So I have to create a new Android research file. The directory name should be raw, but uh, uh, it's better to create uh, a subfolder that I will call data, for example. Um, so let's create an Android research directory inside raw, okay? Directory name, let's try to create only raw. Oh, wow. Then create the directory da data inside row he forgot it and a new JSON file that I will call tasks.json ok the, the, the data folder is not uh, so important. important ok now Inside this, uh, this file, I should uh, insert the list of, uh, of tasks that uh, I can download from the, the server. So let's connect to the server. Okay. Slash API slash. Okay. Slash tasks. This path uh, can be taken from the script. You, you've already developed it, so I will not uh, cover this part. So I'm copying and paste this, uh, this JSON structure inside the tasks.json. Now, save. Now I want to uh, read the JSON from this file. OK. To do it, I will use Google as usual. So I will connect to Google and I will uh, search for Android read JSON file, for example. Okay. Uh, there is uh, an office, uh, official uh, page, so I will connect uh, to the official Android developer uh, uh, documentation, JSON reader. Uh, okay, here is uh, all the explanation, but if we go down, we will find uh, um, an example to do it. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's look. New message. Okay, I will copy everything. inside my, my application in the activity main main activity as usual so here I'm copying all the functions that uh, the, uh, the documentation suggests me uh, looking at the, the code okay I hope you can uh, you can see um, Okay, the main, the main function, the main method that we should use is the read JSON stream that accepts an input stream as this input. Uh, inside this input stream, we only uh, take the information from the file and then we pass them to the uh, JSON reader object. Then we return the converted message. However, we have to parse this, uh, uh, this structure because uh, the JSON, uh, JSON reader doesn't know what is the structure of our data. In fact, if we go down in the read message, there is uh, uh, the part in which the, the JSON is parsed. So let's start with importing everything we need. First of all, uh, okay, it's better to start with the 
uh, okay, this, this function, the read JSON uh, stream, returns a list of messages, but we don't have message. We have uh, tasks, for example. So we will substitute this message with task. But uh, to, do, to do it, we have to create a new object called, for example, task with the information we need. Okay, uh, I should look in the documentation, but there is not enough time, so I will do it, and you, you have to trust me. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I will create a new folder inside our uh, package, so new package, and I will call it uh, uh, custom objects, for example. Okay, inside this folder I will create a new class that I will call task. Okay, perfect. Okay, inside this uh, class I will declare every variables that will uh, uh, that will compose our task object. So the task should contain Look, looking at the, the, the JSON, the task should contain a description, an ID, and a urgent uh, field. So I will create three variables called in this way inside the, the, the structure. Uh, obviously, I have to substitute okay, in this way description. Me, string description, then int id and int urgent. Okay. Uh, looking at the documentation, you have uh, you have to do another thing that is uh, uh, you should create the getter and setter methods that uh, let you access these objects. Why? Because this object should be private. So if you want to access this information, you should use the methods that the object provides. So I will declare it, these, these variables, as private. Okay. And then I will use the automatic uh, um, tool to create getter and setter. So I will press code then I will use um, generate to create getter and setter methods uh, it asks me for which uh, variables I want to create them so I will select all of them and it created the methods uh, I will uh, move them at the end of the file but, but only because uh, I like it okay. Uh, the getter is used to return the value of the description, for example, in this case, and the setter is used to set the value of the description. So the variables are private, instead the, the methods are public. Okay? This is uh, the common way to create a new object in Java and Android. Too. Okay? Now that we have this uh, object, we can use it here. So instead of list of message, we want to use list of task. Okay. Now Android Studio will help me to uh, import every um, every package that we need. So the list one, the input stream, I/O exception, JSON reader. I'm pressing simply Alt and Enter. Uh, then input stream reader now here again the message will be substituted by task here too and here ok again ok this is not the, the best way to do it so I will substitute this part but don't worry then it should ask me to import something else, JSON token. Oops. Where is okay? Alt enter. Array list. Where is okay? Array list. Uh -huh. And 
Okay. Now, come back to the beginning. Okay. Using this function, we can read the uh, the JSON file and import the structure that uh, the, the data that it contains. Um, okay. Perfect. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's modify the one the, the part that uh, uh, parts the the code. So here we pass a list of tasks. Excuse me. It return it should return a list of tasks. So if we look at the uh, the message, okay. Let's look. Excuse me again. Uh, at this, uh, this, uh, the, at the JSON, it should contain a list, so an array of tasks. So the main structure is tasks, and then there is an array. Okay, so we have something like this, but it's different. So coming back here, we can see that uh, uh, at the beginning of the uh, of the file, it, it uh, uh, wants the, this implementation wants uh, directly an array. But if we go down, we can see that uh, uh, okay, we can see it in the documentation because it's important to understand the JSON. Okay. In the documentation, it says that the, the, the code should parse something like this. So we have an array directly, an array of objects. The objects are something that contains an ID and a text, a, a G, geo, user, and the user is an object too. What we have instead? We have at, at first the tasks and then an array. So it is something similar to this, to the user. So we have to find the part of the code in, in which it pairs the, the user. So here, for example, we have uh, the user, okay? What does it do? Uh, it takes the object and pass it to a new function that is read the user. We have to do the same thing. So, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's come back to the beginning, okay? At first we had this, the read message array should do what I just explained. So, uh, first of all, it should take the tasks element and then look inside. We can do it by copying this part of the code. So, um, this is not a list. Okay, let's do it directly in the read JSON uh, stream so that it is easier to understand. So here inside the try, I will do what I'm speaking about. So I have the reader, begin object, perfect. Then uh, looking inside this object, I will take the name that is inside, in our case it's tasks. So if name, let's delete everything that is not useful. If we contain if the uh, the reader contains the tasks, excuse me, the tasks object, okay, it will uh, um, it will work. Okay, so now let's create a variable to contain the list taken from that uh, um, from the JSON received. So, for example task list equal to new array excuse me I, I, I made a mistake so new array list task okay. now in this variable I should insert uh, what I will take from another function that I will create now. For example, read tasks. Okay. 
No. The other things should be right, but instead of returning the read message array, I should return the just created variable. Return task list. Okay, now let's create a read task function. Okay. checking if it was uh, all done in the, in the right way. Now, uh, the task, they get uh, the read task function, okay, public, should, should return, return again, let's say, a list, list of tasks. Accepting again this thing. Let's delete it. Okay, so I'm using the code that uh, uh, the documentation provides us to, the, to uh, parse the, the, the array. Because, the, why? Because uh, as you can see in the JSON, we have the tasks inside the task there is an array so I have to parse uh, an array so okay uh, I will use the same code by only substituting the name of the variables so I will call these tasks tasks dot add so in this way it uh, uh, loop over the all the elements of the array and create a task object for every of them. Uh, and then at the end, it returns an array, the complete, the complete array of tasks. Okay. Okay, the error is in the capital letters. Okay, now, so looking at the, the JSON, we are at this, the, last step in which we have the final object containing the description, the ID and the urgent uh, element, okay? So we have to use the code that uh, uh, the example implemented in the read message. So the read message that we will call the read task will return every single task. So the, uh, the function we, we have already developed uh, loop over the, all the elements of the array of our JSON and call this function every time. So the read task should return the single task taken from the uh, from the JSON. So here read task and here let's use the right variables. Let's initialize them. Description, excuse me, description, and finally there was urgent. Okay, then inside the, um, the while we have to take the right element. So if the element is description, we should take the description. So description equal to reader dot next int. Excuse me, string. Ne then if we are parsing the ID, we should save the ID that is an integer. Instead, if we are parsing the urgent element we should save the urgent element read oh excuse me reader 
Dot. Okay, next I int. Otherwise, it can skip this element. Okay, if it doesn't contain any of the uh, indicated uh, elements, it should skip. Uh, else without if. What I did? Okay, another parenthesis. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I can delete it. Okay, reader. Perfect. Now, at the end, I have to insert these elements inside the uh, an, a new object, the task. So let's create a new task object, single task, equal to new uh, task. Okay, and then let's assign the, va the values inside the, the, the object. So uh, don't worry. Task, single task, single task dot set description description okay. then single task dot set id id and then single task dot set urgent urgent okay Finally, we have to return the task, the single task. Okay, now this function is not useful, neither this one, so I will delete them. Okay. Now, in this way, we have the function that should convert uh, the, the list obtained from the JSON in a Java object. But where is the, the list, the JSON file? We have to read from a file. How to do it? Simply, I will write directly the code, copying it from the solution that I will publish in the, uh, on the website because it's too late but you can find as usual it uh, in the documentation looking for example uh, how to read uh, from from a file in android okay I will write it because I'm not finding it. Uh, they, they are only two lines of code. Uh, Here I have to pass the name of the file that is inside the R file tasks. Okay. And finally, okay. I uh, I will pass this uh, this element to the function I've created. So uh, list tasks. Tasks list. 
equal to read JSON stream and I will pass the input stream I've already created. I've just created, okay. Unhandled okay, okay, exception, catch. IO exception. Okay, so <coughs> in this way I will take the list of uh, tasks, but uh, I want to print them inside the list view that we created inside the uh, our our view our layout. <coughs> okay, first of all, to do it, we have to know the name of uh, the list view in, in which we have to insert the list of tasks. So let's call it uh, task list view. Okay, perfect. And now, as usual, we should look at the documentation to understand how to do it, but uh, I will do it uh, uh, copying the code because it's late. So, we have simply to um, insert the, um, the list inside the list view. It's better to look at the at Okay, here is a tutorial from uh, Rogella that uh, will help us okay. with the readapter. Okay, I can simply copy. I will simply copy, copy one part of the code, for example this one uh, that will insert uh, the list just created the list just created inside the list view so copy Okay, where is the list view? Okay, the beginning. So I will copy everything, even though I will delete a lot of code. Here, pa paste. So I will delete this part, the creation of the list, and then I will okay, import this view. Alt Enter. Okay, find view by ID and pass the ID which we specified. And then I will use sta stable array adapter. Uh, it's not defined. Why? Okay, array adapter should work. Okay. I will use the array adapter instead of stable. And then I will pass the list tasks list to the list view. Okay. In this way, if I run the application, it should work. Um, There is an error, file not found, access is denied. In the meanwhile, the Android simulator will start and I have to solve the problem. Then it cannot access the file. It 
seems to work. <coughs> okay. Here is the list of our tasks. As you can see, it shows you the objects. The reason is that uh, we use the uh, default array adapter uh, that shows directly the object. If we want to see the uh, content, for example, the description of our task list, we can uh, override the toString method inside the task object. Uh, this is not the best way to do it, but uh, uh, in this situation, it will. Um, it will solve it because the best solution is to create a new adapter, a new array adapter. But it's not so easy, and we don't have enough time to explain it. I will, uh, however, uh, paste a link inside the um, the solution to let you understand how to create an array adapter by your own. Um, okay. Maybe I'm, I'm opening a, a wrong uh, project. This is the way that, uh, why I'm not finding what I need. This is the second time. Okay, this is the way to create, override the two-string uh, uh, method. So let's paste it here, and now if I run again the application, this second button is used to simply, uh, instead of run it, so close and run it again, the application, uh, it should substitute only the part that uh, were changed. So it should perform the compilation faster. So this is the list of our, uh, of our tasks. Okay, now. I know it's late, but <laughs> we started at uh, 4 and 30. Uh, now, we should substitute this code with the one that should take the, the list of tasks from the server by an HTTP REST call. I will try to do it uh, in the few minutes that remain, but otherwise you will find the solution on the website in, in the, I don't know, the next three hours. Okay. So. Yes. Yes, I, I will copy the code and I will explain how, how does it work. It's better. Or maybe it's better to open directly the application the final application that I will publish as a solution. Okay, so here open uh, GitHub to the list. Okay, so <coughs> the solution will contain three different activities. The first one is the main activity that will contain the list of elements of the, the, tasks, the tasks, then a button to insert a new 
uh, task inside the uh, inside the, the list. So, uh, looking at the main activity, that is, that is this one, you can see that at first I use guys. Okay, I use uh, a new an, an async service to uh, contact the server and take the uh, the, the list. Uh, here is the way that uh, I implemented to do it. What does it do? It will call it will call an, uh, a service that I created. This is the uh, async get task list service. That is an async ser service that does exactly what we want to do here. Okay, the async the async uh, task service is implemented. Uh, in this way, we have uh, a doing background method that will uh, do what we want to do. Uh, in this case, it will contact the server using uh, uh, an HTTP, HTTP URL connection, and uh, the result is uh, returned uh, to another function that will uh, pairs, parse again the, uh, the code that we receive so from the server because it is already a JSON object so we have to paste it. Uh, then there are other stuff, for example the on pre execute method that uh, will show you a, a message that uh, uh, to indicate that it is loading and uh, an on post execute that will perform the actions we want to perform after the list uh, is loaded. In this case uh, I will uh, execute uh, the method that is uh, implemented in the main activity to populate the list is simply so in the main activity I will call the async service that will contact the server when the information are returned from this service the method that uh, uh, populates the list is called okay uh, so I will do it for all the other uh, activities the second activity is uh, the one that shows you uh, the tasks details and uh, the last activity is the, the one that lets you uh, create a new task. Uh, you, will, uh, you, you can see the code and uh, if you have doubts or uh, questions you can contact me by mail. Uh, I will simply run the application and show you how does it work? Okay, this is the list. Uh, if I click on insert a new task, it will open a <coughs> the task of the uh, to, to insert a new task, so for example ABC. Uh, you gent oh yeah, I have to use the Android uh, keyboard instead of my keyboard. Insert, now you can see the ABC uh, element at the bottom of the list. If I click on an element, I will see the details. I can change them by clicking update and at the end delete it. Okay, I can simply show how to debug this application if I stop it and I press this button that is at the top that is the bug or simply go in the run menu and click on the bug app I can debug the application so uh, for example let's take a breakpoint at this point here in the part in which the, the application should take the list from the async, uh, um, async service uh, I'm clicking on it to, to create another breakpoint inside the doing background so that you can see how uh, the service works. So, the bug, I select as usual the simulator. Okay. Now, as you can see, the application stopped. The, the, the simulator says me that something goes wrong, but. Okay, something goes wrong. This is not the best way to explain Android, I know. The projector at the beginning, now Android Studio. And 
Okay, now it's, it is working, so it stopped at the red points. So if I click on the button that is here, show execution point, and then resume program, it will go Okay, excuse me. Uh, it will go to the next breakpoint. Otherwise, if I want to execute uh, step by step, I can click step over. That is uh, 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 that you can see near the mouse. Okay, step over. It will go to the next uh, uh, instruction, and I'm continuing to the last uh, to the next breakpoint that is inside the doing background function in which I contact the server. I take the input stream as, uh, as before from the file and then I pass it to the function that uh, actually uh, pay, parse the, the code. Uh, what is important to say is that, uh, as I told before, I cannot contact the server inside the main activity. In fact, I created an async task. Uh, I wanted to show you the steps uh, of uh, resolving this bug. So uh, I wanted to show you that if I implemented this part inside the main activity, the and Android Studio told me, uh, tell me that uh, I cannot do it because it is done in the main activity. Uh, but it's not uh, enough time. Another thing, uh, the, another error that I wanted to show you is the permission one. If I try to contact the server without declaring in the uh, manifest, uh, that I want to, um, I use, I want to use the the internet connection. It will not <coughs> work. I will try. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay, uh, this is the man the manifest file. As I explained to you the l in the last uh, les lesson, here is the uh, permission, the, the the part in which you have to declare the permission that you need. Here I'm, uh, I'm declaring that I want to use internet. Okay, if I delete it, okay, let's delete it, and uh, I start the application, an error should be generated. Okay, the list is not loaded, and if I go in the console. Okay, in the console I can find this execution error. Socket, uh, okay, sorry. socket execution, socket fail, permission denied. Because I uh, didn't uh, specify what is the uh, permission that I need. So if I come back to the Android manifest and insert again the permission, it should work again. So when you develop an Android application, the first thing to uh, understand is what are the permissions that you need. So every time, for example, you want to connect uh, a server or something uh, using the internet, you have to specify the internet permission. If you want to write to the disk, to the, uh, to the disk you have to uh, specify that you want to do it, and so on. Um, the other thing that is important is to create different separated uh, services that are Asynchronous, asynchronously, excuse me, from English, uh, contacted and uh, executed differently from the main activity. So uh, I wanted to show the error, but uh, in any case, uh, okay. This is the application, and uh, you will find it in the uh, on, on, in the solutions. Uh, okay. Thank you, sorry for the delay. Don't forget that there is the deliverable on sa Saturday and uh, all the other days uh, you can find the other days on the website, okay? Bye.